time. And, and in doing that, uh, they were going to change the way the Earth functions. These, these buildings, uh, what's so interesting about them is that they were built over 13,000 years, but the entire structure was created in a matter of hours. Not on this dimension, but on the fourth dimension, on the higher fre frequencies of the Earth's uh, consciousness. They built the entire thing, and they did that through consciousness in the same way they built the first, first one from the top down. And, and so once all these buildings were created on that other level, they slowly began to pull them out of the fourth dimension onto the thir third dimension. And these buildings were built by normal means. They were built by different tribes like the Mayans and the Yucatan, or in China, or in Japan. Japan has over a hundred pyramids uh, running down their, their islands. Uh, all over the world, in Tibet and, and Mongolia. Mongolia has some of the most amazing pyramids on earth, if you, and hardly anyone even knows about this stuff. But they're all over. And, uh, and this was the beginning of something, uh, of, a, of an ancient science that we know a little bit about now. It's a science called geomancy. What were they doing by building these pyramids and temples and all these structures all over the world? What were they doing by doing this? Well, it was a very deep level of what today, in modern times, they call geomancy. And what is geomancy? Geomancy is a modern term, more or less. Uh, I'm sure they had another name for it, but it is, it is what it is, is using uh, uh, stones, rocks, crystals. Uh, in modern times, they use uh, brass, wires, different kinds of physical things to change the energy flow of the earth. Uh, it, it, and these buildings, when they're placed on very, very specific, precise places on the earth, uh, they change the internal flow inside the Earth and the external flow above the Earth. Uh, and I'm talking about the way these kind of energies are energies that are created by uh, volcanoes, by tectonic plate pressures, by geopath lines and all kinds of internal structures. You can, by moving certain stones, massive stones like a Great Pyramid, when you build certain things in very specific places, it changes the way those energies flow. And they also changed the way the energies flow above the Earth. And what they were doing by doing this, in, in this way, was to create a new consciousness grid. Uh, a, the grid that we lost in Atlantis by falling in that, con literally the same fall that the Bible was talking about, by falling from a higher level of consciousness down to where we are now, uh, they were changing this, influencing it, and creating a brand new one so that we could get back. Without this grid, Without the consciousness grid, which we haven't talked about yet or really explained, but without this grid that surrounds the entire Earth, we cannot get to this new, this new or old level of consciousness. We can't return to where we once were. It's impossible. You have to have that. And so all of these millions of people that had to uh, carve these stones and put them in place uh, and these 13,000 years of time were essential in order to, to do this kind of geomancy on a global level, also a new kind of grid could be formed around the external in space around the Earth so that we can make a transformation at this time, right now, today. If you go back 110 years ago to the beginning of the, uh, of the 20th century, uh, at that time, they believed there were approximately 30 million species on Earth. Now, it took somewhere between 4.6 to 5 billion years, depending on who you talk to, for those 30 million species to develop and, and to be living on the surface of the Earth at this time. But in those 110 years, because of this level of consciousness that we are in now, we have killed these things. We are now down to approximately 15 million species on Earth. It depends on who you talk to. Everybody varies on, on how many, the number, but that's approximately what it is. Almost half of the life that's on Earth is now extinct. It's gone. It's never to be seen again, probably. If we can make it into the next level of existence, 
uh, all of this will, will end. It, we will be able to fix what took place over this last 110 years. If we do not return to this other level of consciousness, one of two things is going to take place. And, and almost all of the indigenous tribes that I've talked to around the world, they all agree with this. If we do not make it this time, up into this level of consciousness that we were before, then we will end up killing this planet, and we will kill all the life on it. We will destroy this place. And, uh, and so uh, it is up to you, and it is up to all of us now to remember what this is all about and to make changes within ourselves so that we, we do not go extinct. Because if we do, it is the end of what, what everything that is, is started on this planet. It will go away. What needs to be understood is that each one of these species has a, uh, a, an electromagnetic geometrical uh, field that extends around the entire Earth. Uh, every one of them, and they're unique. Each one is completely unique. If there were only two insects on Earth, and, that, and that's the only two insects there were on the whole planet, they could not exist unless there was a consciousness grid around the planet uh, that surrounded the planet just for them. And, that, and the geometry of it would, would reflect exactly the geometry of their body. Uh, you, could, you could tell very quickly that those bugs came from that particular geometry. So out of these 15 million life forms that are left on Earth today, uh, there are three that are human. So we actually have three different kinds of human beings on Earth. Uh, they, they perceive the one reality in a different way. Uh, and the first one is the aboriginals, the original people on Earth. So the aboriginals in Australia, and there are the little pockets of them around the world that are still functioning on the original grid that came out of humanity a, a long, long time ago. And then there is the next grid, which is much more, as I, we really don't know very much about this grid geometrically, uh, what it looks like or form. There's been har almost no scientific research done on that at all. But on uh, our level, uh, the, the, this, uh, this grid is uh, believed to be a uh, rhombic uh, triacondohedron, uh, which is a a, a relationship between an icosahedron and a dodecahedron, but, uh, but a very specific angle of how they are connected together. And it was uh, the United States, we believe, who first scientifically discovered that this thing was actually around the world, uh, though Russia had a lot to do with it. And uh, we believe, we're not exactly sure, because so much of this is kept secret. And what we do know is that this grid that s goes around the world, it has places where the lines cross, and it's very interesting, very, very interesting that most of the military bases in the world between Russia and the United States are located exactly on those nodal points. Uh, why would they do that? Because they knew that that was the consciousness grid of the entire planet, and if they could control that grid, they can control all the people in the world. And so it's, ob it's an obvious military move to make, and, it, and they've known this for a very long time now. Uh, I think it went back into uh, probably the 60s when they first discovered this. There's also now a third grid. This is the grid that uh, Chikutet, Arlich, Vomalites, and Ra, and, and Ararat are uh, creating by making all these, these uh, sacred sites all around the world and doing this geomancy. They are slowly forming around the earth. Every time they build a new one, it changes the shape a little bit, and they keep getting it closer and closer and closer to a grid that is an icosahedron, dodecahedron blend perfectly at a very specific angle. Also, it's similar to the other one, but it's completely different. And this one was discovered by Russia. We do know that. And they were, and they were the ones that first discovered that and, uh, and I'm sure have done massive research on, uh, on how that grid relates into the next level of consciousness because that's where we're going. Uh, without these grids, without this new grid that, that is being formed right now, uh, there would be no ascension. Uh, nobody would be able to move from where we are now, and no one would ever be able to go into a higher level of consciousness until and that grid is completed and finished. And, uh, and so before that, uh, you could move to uh, 
You could become a, an ascended master, but we could not move as, a, as an entire race, as an entire planet. We could not move until that's completed. The differences in these three consciousness, these three different ways of perceiving the reality, are tied to something that is called the golden mean. The golden mean is something that is in all life everywhere, though it's, it's not directly being done. It's done through the Fibonacci. This would take a while of study to understand this. The golden mean is a proportion. Uh, if you were to cut a stick at a certain place, it would be such that this point would be 1, and this one would be 1.618033.9, and it would go on forever. It's an un unending uh, uh, number. And, uh, but life is always trying to reach this number, and so is consciousness. Consciousness, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a relationship between the square and the circle, and when the perimeter of the square and the circumference of the circle are exactly the same, that's the golden mean. And, uh, but, we ne but we reach it in stages. And so the aberrational grid uh, is very close to the golden mean. It's not perfect. It's, not, it's off a little bit, but it is close. The grid that we are on, the, uh, the, this middle grid that we are on right now, it is not even close to being golden mean. It's so far off, it's ridiculous. And so we are not in tune with nature. That's obvious. This is why we're killing the planet. Uh, this, is, this is meant to be a, a transition state between the aboriginal state and the next higher level of consciousness. We're meant to come here, spend a few moments, and get on with it, and go on to another level. Because we can't stay here, because anybody that stays in this state of consciousness very long will kill any planet that they're on, because they are not connected to nature. The next level that we're going to is more harmonic than the uh, aboriginal state. It is, it is a much closer uh, golden mean ratio uh, consciousness. And, uh, and if we can just make it to that place, then we can solve all of our problems. It will, be, it will just happen pretty much automatically. So this second grid uh, is based on what we call polarity consciousness. Uh, it's got different names uh, around the world, but it, it simply means that we see everything as either black or white. We, constantly are judging every situation. Every person we see, we judge them as good or bad. And this is uh, the nature of polarity consciousness. It is a problem on one level uh, because it creates ego in the mind. It, it thinks only of itself. It doesn't think of other people except in people we love or close to us. But people that are a distance from us, it, it doesn't care about them. It only cares about itself. And that's, and that's the level of consciousness that we're in now. Normally, uh, these consciousness grids are created naturally. Uh, people live over hundreds of thousands of years, and they evolve over those periods of time. And in so doing, they slowly create, the, from the grid that they're in, they, they automatically create the next grid through a natural process. But because we arrived at this once before, we're being allowed to reach this, but to reach it synthetically. Uh, we're through creating pyramids and buildings and structures and temples all over the world. This is a synthetic way of doing this. Uh, and, uh, and, and you need to understand that this is what is going on. It is synthetic. Uh, we're being given a second chance at all of this. It, it's all been synthetic right even from the beginning. If you go back even into Egypt, uh, they were using pyramids there. And they were using pyramids to raise it. They used frails and rods and and uh, hooks and all these other kinds of things that they use to put on the spines to tune them to the higher levels of consciousness. It was purely synthetic. And, and everything that has been going on for the last 13,000 years has been synthetic to get us to this place. And once we're on it, all that will not be of, of any use anymore because then once we're on that and we're, we're back onto that consciousness grid, we can go on our own without anybody's help. We'll be able to continue on from there on. I guess there's another little uh, piece that we should uh, explain. Uh, I talked about these three men, Chikutet, Arlich, Vomalites, Ra, and Ararat. Well, the first one, Chikutet, Arlich, Vomalites, uh, he was the king of Atlantis for a very long time. According to the Emerald Tablets, which was written 2,000 years ago, he was ascended master. He had lived there for 52,000 years, believe it or not. When it came time to be for Egypt, uh, he changed his name to Thoth, T-H-O-T-H. 
Thoth was in, in Egypt, he was the scribe.